the class today is a bit um, harder than previous classes. Um, what we are looking at today will be on the uh, technique called Monte Carlo simulation. And we will employ that technique in order to uh, generate data, in order to uh, generate the event, right? In other words, simulations. Uh, the key of simulations is to capture the nature and then trying to imitate that nature, trying to generate the events um, from the configurations that you provide. And those configurations come from these data distributions. And, and that's, that's what we have learned at last, um, uh, in, in, the, in the last set lecture. Um, for, for this one, uh, we are going to delve deeper into a way that you can uh, employ the technique, uh, that you can um, use it in a useful way and you know, to capture the, the actual things and use it to make decision, right? Um, so let's begin. Monte Carlo, right? The name has already suggested that it will have to be uh, involving with something like uh, randomness, right? Something that involving with um, uh, random, randomly, right? Because Monte Carlo is the name of the casino uh, involving with gambling. Well, that would be randomness for sure. So we will we'll take a look at how does it uh, uh, translate it and can be applied it into uh, the problem that we have in uh, data modeling. Okay. Now, first, let me, let, let's take a look at uh, something that is happening right now, um, viral infection all around the world. And it's quite fascinating when you see the mechanism of the virus, that is, uh, in, in itself, the coronavirus would um, trying to infect the cells and then reproducing it, right? Um, in terms of the macro level, when you take a look at it, you'll see that it kind of also infected persons or peoples. And then those person or peoples uh, who have no symptoms, uh, they call it asymptomatic, can carry those virus and infect others um, throughout the global network. So it kind of works at the same mechanism at two levels. Um, there's the model that explains the mechanism of the infections in the, I would say in the population level that epidemiologists use in terms of studying uh, the spreading of the virus. Um, this is one of them, um, a, a very sim uh, basic one of them, that is you think of populations as two pool of uh, people, you have two groups. Um, one group can change into another group. Usually there is a, the, the model called this, uh, um, I think it's, the name is the, the SEIR model. This one is not it. SEIR will contain, uh, uh, is the, the next example that I'm going to use. This is the very basic one of that. Um, the SEIR uh, is the uh, susceptible, exposed, infected, and re removed, right? That's four groups. Now we are looking at just two groups, susceptible and infected. What are they? They, they are like group of people, right? Susceptible can be um, transformed, uh, caught virus into infected. Infected after recover can go back to susceptible. That's that that is for uh, not not for virus. Maybe bacterial infection or not so that you can get reinfected. For virus, once your body develops immune system, then that immune system can uh, kind of take care of the virus when it comes to your body later on. Uh, right, and and uh, you may have seen uh, the, uh, the 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 link that I share. Uh, that's the test of antibody. Antibody is the um, reaction of uh, our body to the virus. Uh, so instead of using the, in, in, in the testing of the virus, instead of using the PCR technique, which is um, to detect the RNA level, uh, they have a new way. Uh, actually, uh, Ajahn at Toronto Khan University, um, they, they kind of detect human uh, body reactions instead of the, um, the virus itself. So if we got infected, our body would have this um, an antibody 
right? And and they kind of, they measure this anti antibody instead of uh, measuring the viral load, virus level itself. So it's quite a clever way, and and it, it is cheaper, a lot cheaper because you don't have to uh, you don't have to do the because the using PCR technique that is for uh, you need you need to have like uh, extracting the the RNA chop into pieces and then measure the specific location to identify that this is that virus and that's expensive and you need to have primers you need to have a specific equipment uh, for for antibody detection it's like a pregnancy test that is you can just measure the antibody in your blood in in your uh, blood in your blood serum and and that's a lot cheaper 100 something so so that's good uh, so what, what we are going to, to look at today is not that. We, what we are going to look at here is the, um, the mechanism of the infections. And you can see that there is a change in, in, in the groups uh, from uh, one group to another group, uh, from susceptible to the infected uh, through the transmission. And that occur from uh, interaction between the two groups and, and hence um, social distancing. <laughs> to reduce the lambda here, the transmission rate. And there's a recovery here to change from one group to another group. And uh, in each group, they have like death and both group and birth coming into susceptible. So you can explain the virus dynamics using this model. Um, researchers have uh, been working with something like this for quite a long time, actually. Um, and you have already learned that in your calculus class, differential equations. I think it's this semester, right? This is the second semester, last semester uh, in the, um, in the uh, mathematics tree, you should have learned the uh, differential equations. And, and, and what does it mean? It means that, uh, let's look at this one. This is the, as, uh, this is the, uh, something like SEIR to explain the hepatitis B uh, virus infection. Uh, so we have the susceptible group uh, changed to Latin group, a group that just like if you think about it for uh, hepatitis B is a group that doesn't have, um, doesn't have symptoms, asymptomatic. Um, and the transient uh, viremia, uh, the group that, uh, have symptoms, I guess, and the carriage, and then to the immune system. So there are transmission changing from one to another. And you can explain that in terms of differential equation and find a closed form of the, of the change in this group. This is the model uh, called dynamic call systems. Uh, and this is something that uh, would be, uh, you would be able to simulate if you understand the mechanic of the transmission, mechanics of the systems. For example, you, you see similar models in, um, in circuits, right? It's the circuit analysis. You see similar models in the mechanical system uh, in the simulation of the uh, traffic. So that's, uh, that's the, the thing that they, they, they mostly call the, um, the, no, the dynamical models, right? That you kind of model the dynamics to change or differential equations. So classical model is like that. Um, from, from those type of model, you can postulate uh, the parameters into that. You can specify the parameter in, into the model. And the models, uh, after you set uh, certain parameters, will give you a certain output. Then you can try changing the parameters, like changing from one uh, position to another position to see what happened. Try or simulating, uh, I, I can write down creating something like dynamical system of the uh, whereas transmission, like using Thailand map, using the, the change in population from Bangkok to, uh, to other provinces to simulate the occurrence of the virus using this type of model. And, use, and use, we can we'll be able to see what would happen over time, right? how many would, would have been infected. Right, uh, we, we need uh, for that, we need to, to have something like initial condition and configuring uh, the model, uh, the, the uh, process into mathematical model. And then we can perform simulation, finding something like equilibrium um, in your class, mathematic class. You might have learned that uh, in the name of 
Uh, I don't think, uh, yes, it should be something like complementary solution, right? Complementary solution uh, or a general solution. Right? So, so that's for the mathematic class. Right? So, and, and you can study the behavior, um, the change in the equilibrium point um, by um, changing initial conditions and uh, changing parameters. Uh, so with specific input, we have specific output. And uh, simulation uh, for that sense can be done by just uh, setting uh, initial conditions somehow. And then uh, through the loop, you just compute the system at time t and then increase t and then compute the system at time t increase t. So repeating doing that, then you can simulate the um, dynamical system. Right, so and this is just like you have a model and then you can increase time calculate at each time point, what would happen. Right, uh, so there is actually more way to do that. Uh, for example, you can solve using differential equation and get the analytical solution. Right? We call that analytical model. And that is when you have a set of differential equations, um, you have systems of differential equation, you can solve the system of differential equation. Um, analytically means by hand, getting the closed form. This is, you know, that is quite difficult in some sense. Um, and, and that's good in, in the sense that you can have a closed form. You can predict output based on just input and parameters. Uh, analytically, you have the equations. Uh, the problem is that this is hard in many ways. Um, and uh, sometimes equations is hard to solve, maybe impossible to solve. Uh, maybe containing some nonlinear form, which make it a lot, a lot more difficult to solve. Um, so you can up to something like simulation model. Simulation models, uh, there you don't need to find a closed form. That means if you have something like the mechanic that is, that are in nonlinear in nature, like making decision, yes, no. Um, choosing one out of another, deciding two out of five, something like, like those things, then it's uh, a lot more suitable for the uh, simulation modeling. Um, in the simulation modeling, uh, instead of uh, specifying specific value to get a specific output, you specify the simulated input, you specify the uh, parameters of the distribution, and then uh, we would predict the output based on those uh, simulated input coming through the system. Right. So we're comparing between the two. And, and what we are going to look at is, is the, the right-hand side, a way that you can create a simulation model. Okay, we compare, uh, we compare different types of modeling. Uh, we have something like analytical method, uh, like solving the ordinary differential equation, um, which uh, allow you to analyze the behavior of the equations uh, there, but yeah, like I said here, it's limited to a simple model. You have a method to do the numerical computation like the Euler approximation, um, Newton method, uh, that allow you to kind of go from one point to another point to another point and then calculate what change, right? Um, you, can, you can look up the technique, uh, this type of technique later on, right? So well, about what is the uh, Euler approximation here. Um, this can handle complicated model, but it doesn't have randomness in itself, right? Um, you have to uh, re handle more complex model, but it's still limited. Um, so now if you have something that is uh, a lot more random and a lot more complex, there's this technique. A lot, uh, there are a lot, a lot of technique that have Monte Carlo name in front of them or Markovian. Uh, those techniques relate to randomness like what we are going to look today is Monte Carlo simulation, which uh, can handle quite realistic system, meaning that uh, you can simulate randomness and then incorporate uh, realities into that. Right, uh, but, but the problem is that it has to repeat a lot of time in order to get your solution. So it has to uh, employ a lot of computation, which nowadays, um, which nowadays is not a problem at all, uh, comparing to a lot more complex computation that happens in games and in other computation models, okay? So the reason we should use um, simulation would be that we want to use the technique to understand the stochastic system, 
uh, the system related to randomness. And that means everything. Uh, everything relates to randomness uh, to a certain extent. Uh, except some law, but there are certain uh, fluctuation in them as well. Like when you said about gravity. Right? Gravity remains the same if you are at the level, right? Uh, and you are at a certain level, but it would not be the same at, at different height because of the uh, physics, laws of physics, you know that. Uh, so the stochastic of that means that it really led to some randomness. Uh, everything related to some randomness. Uh, and you might want to control certain parameters in the stochastic system in order to study what would happen. For example, if I simulate, if, if, if I simulate the uh, change in the viral infection throughout the country, I could simulate uh, what would happen if uh, we stay home or if someone who stay home uh, still go out. Sometimes we can simulate that, right? So in simulation, you can study those things, right? Uh, to, to, to do that, you would need to have, first, you need to have like mathematical constructs um, that explain the process. You need to have the simulated inputs, the parameters that you want to uh, put into your model. Then combining them, you get the simulation, okay? There are many types of simulation, okay? One we are going to look at today is called Monte Carlo, but there are other things like discrete event simulations. Um, you think about it, think about the turn-based game. I don't, that, that is like discrete event simulation. Final Fantasy, um, back then, that is have a slot base. Um, yeah, discrete event simulation is like that. Or um, civilization, uh, the, the turn-based game. Right? Um, the, and, and there are other simulations as well. We, we, will, uh, we will cover just one of that. Okay, for simulation, when you have a simulated input like the distribution of data, you can fetch that distribution into the model and then study what would happen at the output size. So if I know that the car would come through the intersection at a specific uh, Poisson distribution, uh, like data, uh, then I can fetch that distribution through the model of, of the, of the um, intersection. That means the car had to go through intersection, wait for red light, uh, wait for green light, and then it can go off. And then there can be like a crash occurring time to time. You, you, you can do that. And, and then uh, the output would be, uh, you can measure the output like the uh, traffic at that intersection. So, so when, with the simulated input, you have simulated output. And then you can measure the output of the system through that. Okay. Uh, and you can, use the, um, you can use this technique to simulate deterministic model as well. So having one function and what, if you want to study what would happen at the output, you can fetch the distribution instead of just one value into it, fetch distribution into it, and then you can study what would happen at the output frame. Okay, so uh, the technique itself is quite um, powerful in a sense. Right, uh, this would uh, integrate the, the, the thing that you not know uh, but you need to represent it with the model first in order to be able to simulate that and then uh, put the input into the model to get the, the estimated output.